Feel much fucking better, dude. Have full ass belly, food. I got some good sleep. Motherfucking back, ready to crush the shit out of this fucking painting and this goddamn fucking whip. Motherfuck. Hell fucking yeah, dude. Plan for today. <sighs> Get started on deets on the chair. TBH, man. I like the way the motherfucking cat's looking as is. I think he looks pretty great. He's got this <laughs> kind of goofy ass look. So I might keep him, you know, I might keep him there. Um, the chair needs to start getting some deets on it. And of course we have to, you know, address the whole fucking background too. Um, but right now I'm just, I'm kind of, mosquito, I'm kind of hyped about the foreground. So I'm gonna like just go ham on that today. That's what, that's what today's efforts are gonna be focused on. And, um, you know, to that, to that end or, you know, fucking, uh, I would say, I would say, you know what, uh, dude, work on the portion of the painting that makes you excited to paint that day, you know, like, uh, I think if you're starting out, yeah, it's important to have some structure, work dark to light, work from the background to the foreground, uh, all that stuff, you know, but bro, after some time, man, you know, you just gotta fucking be, you gotta, you gotta like get hyped and, uh, and sometimes that just means working on the thing that you want to work on for that day. And that's totally cool, man. That's like, that's what you got to do. So today we're working on details on the chair because that's what's getting me hyped right now. So I'm going to do that. What else, dude? Stay hydrated. Drink a lot of fucking water. Electrolytes. Eat good food eat a lot of it, get enough sleep, bro, or else your body is just going to crap out on you. Hydration, foodation, and sleepation are going to be the, the three big Asians that you need to get through a good studio day, okay? Just remember those three Asians and you're going to be fucking good. And in the meantime, while you're getting all that ready, man, I'm going to get to fucking work, bro. Let's do it. Okay, so I think the main thing I want to focus on right now, since we're working on details, is what I'd like to call the detail meta. Now, in gaming, meta refers to as essentially the most effective tactics available. And it refers to basically the, the most effective strategy for doing something. And this definitely holds true for the detail aspect of painting. So essentially, like I spoke about in the last video, when you can kind of figure out the meta of the detail that you're working on, you can sort of, you have a lot more freedom to apply it anywhere. And then that leaves you to not have to refer to the reference so strictly or to adhere to the reference so strictly. So in this case, for instance, uh, if we look at maybe one of the tears in the chair, we zoom in on it and we can see we've got a light thing or a patch of light and then underneath it, a dark shadow. And the same goes for the, and th that would represent the little tears in the cushion, right? And the same goes for the cushion pushing through the leather or pleather, whatever material it is. Uh, you've got, you know, an area of dark and then you've got a splotch of the yellow and the ends are um, painted in a very specific way. So they're, they're not blended into the chair. They're just, um, they're butted right up against and they're sharp. And so just keeping those very simple, those three very simple things in mind, you know, dark or light area, shadow underneath and splotchy yellow um, surrounded by sharp lines, you can, use this as a working template for the rest of the detail throughout the painting. And so anytime that I wanna, let's say, add a tear or a rip in the chair, all I have to do is make a patch of light and then underneath it, add a shadow. 
And so what I'm doing basically is taking that template and applying it in different ways. And of course, sticking to the reference to some degree, but I'm, ha I'm giving myself a lot of freedom to move around. And as you can see, it works pretty well, man. I mean, it, it, it's, um, it's a very effective strategy. And so I would encourage you to consider this as a, as a sort of armature of realism. I guess that's the best way I can put it. Realism has a sort of armature or the meta. And once you figure that out, you can really insert realism into basically anything. Another example would be like depth of field, right? That's one meta, of, or that's one part of the armature of realism. And if you break that down into a meta, what it would be is blurry thing in the background, sharp thing in the foreground. Just as simple as that. That's the meta for like depth of field. And it's one of the armatures of realism. So armed with this, um, this sort of information, I think, it has really helped me insert that quality, I guess, in basically anything I want. And I think that's something very powerful that you can use for yourself moving forward. So after I got done with this piece, I was um, wanting to do another, you know, exercise. I, as you can see, like I, I ended up going pretty far past uh, just the foreground, which was my initial goal. I wanted to just work on the foreground, but I ended up hitting the background and layering up. And I just, I was having a really good time in the studio. But afterwards, I found myself still with a good amount of time. Uh, and so I decided to work on something else. And I guess that's also one of the advantages of uh, working in this kind of smaller scale. When you're working really large, you have to be very conscious about getting in every day and plugging in really, really lengthy hours if you want to finish the piece in any kind of like respectable timeline. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to take a year on these motherfuckers. That's like not my goal. So, uh, one of the advantages of working in the smaller scale has been m this ability to really move through images, which is something that I really enjoy. After I was done, however, I still found myself with quite a bit of time left and, and a lot of creative energy too. So I decided to work on this next little painting. Now before I show it to you, I just want to <laughs> make sure that you know that I uh, absolutely condone uh, racism or uh, condemn racism uh, in all of its forms, etc., etc. Racism bad, me good. Uh, but this painting, I came up with it. Basically, I started with the title. Um, I was looking. I was wanting to come work on something from imagination, and the you know I had some references lying around, um, and I just didn't want to use them. I wanted to work just basically from my mind and, and try to create something out of nowhere. So. I was just thinking about what I'd want to paint and um, I couldn't really think of anything so I started to think of words which to me is another alternative for coming up with a painting is you know you start with a title and then work backwards and I was thinking of the word land party and then after that I, I uh, thought of the word clan party <laughs> so I made a sort of crossover between the two and the way I started this image was uh, with uh, using procreate with my iPad and it's just a very quick time lapse, but I used it to basically compose my own reference in that. And then from there, I got started here with the actual painting. And it's, you know, this part of, this is gonna be just the first day on it. Normally eight by tens, I would move through them pretty quickly just in one session. But here I'm trying to actually build a nice, um, build a very slow image because possibly I'd like to make it big. And so for this first layer here, I'm just painting the, the screens that are gonna be part of the land party. And then after it dries, I'll come back in with the figures. But what's really cool about the screens here is that you can also see the meta for luminosity, right? And the meta here is very simple too. I start by blocking in just a dark square and then after that, I input the color that I that I find is the that closest 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 relates to a backlit computer screen, which is normally a combination 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 of a little bit of phthalo blue and uh, alizarin crimson, or phthalo blue uh, or alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue, just depending. And I put that right in the center. And then from there, I move on and I sort of put a halo around the, um, around the light part of the screen. 
and that is one of the bigger keys to it. That's uh, something that Felicia Forte, the artist, does fucking super well. She's like the king of luminosity in my eyes. And um, I've learned a lot and taken a lot of notes from her and how she does her work. So there's this little halo around the screen and that effectively represents the glow. And then after that, I can go back in with a little bit of you know dark even around that just to kind of punch up the value. And uh, you can see how this reads immediately as a glowing screen. And I think the misconception is normally that what you put on the screen, you have to have this bright, vibrant color in order for it to kind of fool the eye and, and read as this kind of luminous screen. But in reality, it's not the screen itself, it's the context. It's everything that you put around the glowing thing that actually makes it read that way. And so that's just another example of a meta for uh, realism or an armature rather or meta for luminosity and so yeah man today was a longer fuller day in the studio and um you know this is a uh, it was a very rewarding day and i've got a couple of very projects uh, i caught i've got a couple of projects that i'm very excited about and fuck yeah man god damn it we're doing it we're getting back in the fucking swing of things. Um, yeah, I feel good. Okay, let's end it here.